Welcome back. I had ordered a high voltage test meter a while ago and it finally arrived. So now I can go check the voltage on that charge fence wire directly, the one that's underneath that power line. And I've also been working on a little circuit to reduce that voltage to something a little more usable, just a few volts, enough to light a LED flashlight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that too in this video. I'll be using that same uh, spark gap circuitry I had before, but only now I'm going to be running that charge through some inductors, and I'm going to use the collapsing magnetic field from these inductors to charge up this array of filter capacitors. So I'll hold the charge here, and then I'm going to use that charge to run through a little LED flashlight. And then I'll go over this circuit a little bit more at the end of this video. Back out here into the power line. Get this wire set up on some stakes. It's starting to sag pretty good. And the first thing I'm going to do is check the voltage on my new high voltage meter. I'm going to set this to 2000 volt AC. Got the ground connected up already. And it'll connect up the line. And right now, I'm getting over 1100 volts. Very interesting. I've seen it as low as 800 volts, but this is the highest that I've seen it. The humidity is about, I think, about 65% right now. I know it changes with the humidity. Higher humidity, lower voltage. Air is acting as a dielectric between the, the wire and the power lines. And we'll connect this stuff over up to the circuit. The spark gap is at uh, 17,007 inch. That's the greatest gap I can have in here in order for it to work. And we'll switch stuff over now. Well, it's up and running right now. It's very bright out here. Can't really see the sparks. You can't hear it. And it's being driven through the inductors and back over into this uh, filter cap. Now I'm just going to test the voltage on that uh, capacitor and see what we're at. That's the thing, it's not an isolated circuit, but and we're running a little over three volts. And it's so bright out here, I don't know if you can see the light is uh, trying to cover it up a little bit. Make it a little bit darker in there so you can see the light. It is pretty bright. It's just hard to see because it's so bright outside. And the next thing to do is to check the amps. Probably just a couple milliamps, I'm guessing. Maybe the first time I did this, I had to set it up now. And I have it hooked up to the meter now on milliamps. So we're getting about 10, 2.9. Anyway, I got it running through this meter here. And this is the milliamp, so we had a little over 3 volts. We're probably getting 30 to 35 milliwatts doing the math so probably losing some from the high voltage down to this I think I need some better inductors this is just some stuff I had scabbed together but it is dropping it down 
in the milliamps went up. Didn't have a way to check the AC microamps because the voltage is over 1100 volts. I can only check the amp readings if the voltage is less than a thousand. Otherwise I'll fry this meter and I just got it. But that's what I'm getting right now. Let's say it jumped up to. So we could be getting 33 milliwatts. Probably have to do something different with the inductors. Would be better if I had like a flyback transformer I could put it through because it's not an isolated circuit. But this is something real easy you can slap together. Though it varies, it probably varies with the wind blowing too. I should check the voltage again. It is coming up to 11 milliamps too. Let me shut it down again and check that. And I got it running. We'll just check what the voltage is. And now we got 3.2. point two. Point two. Probably about three and a quarter volts. So we have to do the math with that, with the milliamps. Check that again. 2.2. Probably around three and a quarter volts. A little bit less, a little bit more, a little bit less. Jumps up and down. I'm not going to do any other volt or amp readings, but have the circuit going and the light is starting to come on. So now I can see how bright the light is. It's getting brighter and brighter. Working pretty good. Light's pretty bright. Try the other bigger part of the light. So, pretty bright when it's darker out. So you can see the light and you can see it sparking in the dark. It's kind of cool. It's starting to snow out here a little bit. Yeah, I wonder what people would say if I left this light on all night out here. Huh. Pretty cool. This is the basic layout of the circuit that I'm using. So we have our antenna and ground and we have a high voltage AC signal between the antenna and the ground. And I have some diodes in here to rectify that signal to charge a little disk capacitor. And over here I drew out a little diode indicating the band on it. And this is how I correspond it to the symbol, because this is the way they need to be laid out in order to work like this and end up with the charges I have indicated on here. 
And here we just have that same Spark app I was using. And here we have an inductor. The inductor will change the current into a magnetic field. And this was just a storage capacitor. This was some uh, electrolytic filter capacitors I had. And this kind of acts like a little battery as it charges up. Now when this capacitor builds up enough, it'll jump the air gap and it'll discharge through the inductor. It'll create a magnetic field and then as this magnetic field starts to collapse, it'll continue to generate a current and to charge up the storage capacitors. It's got less resistance through here so it can generate more of a current. So that's how I reduce the voltage and increase the current. The thing is with using a collapsing magnetic field to generate a current is that you're always going to need to have a load on it. Otherwise a storage capacitor would just keep building up higher and higher voltages. So you always need to have a load on it. And like I was saying, this low voltage circuit right here that I'm going around is not isolated from these high voltage spikes. So it's not quite as safe. And if you have any sensitive loads on there, you might have a little problem with that too. But these LEDs were handling it all right. And the reason I chose to do it like this is because it's very simple and I had all the parts. I didn't have any uh, 2 kilovolt diodes, so I had to put two 1,000 volt diodes in series. So that created a little bit more resistance and kind of took away some power. But anyway, this is the way I have it working out there. And I also tried a variation where I removed this little capacitor, just kind of bypassed it, and it still worked, just that the sparks are a little bit smaller, but more frequent. But it still worked like that. At this point, I accomplished the goals I had set for that fence wire. I was able to directly measure the voltage, so now I have something to compare to. Found about how much energy could be grounded out from it. And I also designed an easy way to step down that voltage to something more usable. I'll still be working some more with that inductor collapsing magnetic field generation circuit just because I think it has potential. And it'll work in some situations. I originally had this idea when looking for a way to step down a high voltage charge from harvested atmospheric energy. And I'll still keep that in mind too. But in the future, I want to do some more setups and experiments just outside of that power line easement. And people ask, well, why bother when you know it's such an insignificant amount of energy? Well, the answer to that is because it's fun. It's also educational. So that's probably something you'll see in a future video.